Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jack Dilday, and I am so thrilled that you have joined us for another Dominion television broadcast. Amen. I trust that you're going to enjoy this broadcast. A little different, a little different setting today. Uh, but I believe that the Word of God is going to penetrate, amen, into your living room or your bedroom or your business, wherever you may be viewing this program at. And again, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, Dominion Television broadcast tonight. Amen. I want us to look at just a couple scriptures today. Amen. I want us to look at uh, in Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. You know, the book of Joel was written right in the middle of an actual drought and an attack upon Judah. The people were desperate. The message of Joel was a consistent call for repentance, uh, for the whole nation to come to repentance. The challenges that laid ahead for Israel were judgment and a destructive invasion uh, from a foreign military power. If they chose repentance and they turned to God, then they would receive restoration. How many knows, how many of you know today that every time you repent, God begins to restore? Restoration comes and follows repentance. That's why repentance is such a great thing. Because then God begins to restore to us what Satan has stolen from us during the time of the sin. So uh, there are desperate people in the world today. They were desperate people in the, in the nation of uh, Israel at that time. And God called them back to repentance the same way he's calling you and I today. The same way he's calling the nation of the United States of America. The same way that he is calling each and every one of us back to repentance today. They were desperate people then, and there's desperate people today. Poplar Bluff, Missouri is full of desperate people that's waiting for somebody to give them the answer. It's full of people that's hungry, waiting for somebody to fill their need. Amen. Now, we've got the programs to help feed our bodies, which is a wonderful program and is a godly thing. It's scriptural. Amen. But I can tell you that that's not, that's not the hunger I'm speaking of. The hunger I'm speaking about is a hunger. There's a longing on the inside of them. There's something missing on the inside of them that only you and I, as born-again ch children of God, we have what it is to, that they're longing for to fill that need. Amen. The, the Word tells us, it tells us in, in Joel chapter 2, verse 15, to blow the trumpet and to sanctify a fast. Call an assembly together. In other words, gather the people together. Sanctify the congregation. You know, there's a lot of people gathering together today. Uh, lots of gathering going on in seeker-friendly churches. Uh, trying to please everybody, uh, you know, trying to uh, make everybody feel good about, you know, what, about what we preach, and about what we sing, and, and, and all of those things. But I can tell you that that's not the people that Joel was talking about. Joel was saying, gather the people that's hungry. Gather the people that desires a move from God in their life. Gather those together. Fast. Pray. Amen. There's something you don't hear a whole lot about anymore and the church is fasting amen but i can tell you amen that fasting will change your heart fasting will change your mind it'll change the way you think fasting will change the way you walk it'll change the way you talk amen and so joel was saying gather those people together that's willing to lay aside their agenda willing to lay aside what their flesh wants gather them together amen and call a low call a, a, a sacred assembly amen sanctify or consecrate set apart the congregation amen blow the trumpet sanctify a fast let the people know that jesus is coming amen i believe we can take this word today and apply it to yours and my life amen that we can apply it to our ministry we can apply it to our daily work and our daily job amen whether it's in our home whether it's on the in the workforce in the grocery store amen and let the people know something is about to happen on this planet amen the, the greatest event that's about to take place that's that that we've longed for for so many years is about to happen Jesus is about to split the eastern skies and return for his children. And it's up to you and I to share that with the people of this world. 
Amen. In Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 33, it says again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Amen. That's exactly what you and I are called to do. We're called to blow the trumpet and warn the people. Amen. We are called uh, to let the people know, lest their blood be upon our hands. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says, How shall they call on him whom they've not heard? Amen. On wh whom they've not believed. How shall they believe on him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. I can tell you that I believe God has a remnant of people. God has a remnant body of believers that's willing to sacrifice their own agenda, that's willing, amen, to set apart their own flesh, amen, of their fleshly desires, amen. God has a people that's willing to go against the flow of the status quo of the church, amen, to, de to, to declare unto this lost and dying world that Jesus is about to come back to receive his own to him. Amen. I can tell you, amen, that I believe that, that God has a remnant body of preachers, of preachers that will warn the people. Amen. It's not about tickling somebody's ears. It's, it's not about telling everybody what they want to hear, but it's telling them the truth. Amen. I want us to look over in Matthew chapter 3. In Matthew chapter 3, the first couple of verses says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. The truth is, this has nothing to do with you and I. It has nothing to do with us. All you and I are doing is preparing the way for Jesus Christ to return. John the Baptist was a forerunner of Christ, and so are you and I. We're to declare to the people that Jesus is about to return, preparing the way uh, for whoever's going to step into your position when you're done, when you're through. Amen. We are preparing the way as pastors, as leaders of the church and of pa as pastors, you and I prepare the people. Now, we don't just prepare them uh, for their own good, uh, prepare their soul for salvation. Of course, that is a part of it. We have to get their soul prepared. Uh, but once their soul is prepared, you and I as pastors, as ministers, we have another step to take. Amen. That is to prepare those people to preach the Word of God. Prepare those people to share the gospel on their job, to share the gospel in the schools, to share the gospel in the grocery store, in the marketplace, wherever it is that they go. Amen. We have a job to prepare those people. Amen. So that in essence, you and I are not just preparing the way for ourselves. We are preparing the way for whoever's going to step in behind us and continue on.